guys. Thanks for joining me on a super hot 94 degree evening. Um, I thought I would do a quick tour of my backyard landscape, kind of show you some tried and true things that have really worked for me over time. Um, I am uh, a landscape designer. My name is Jennifer Bevins. I have owned construction landscape for the last 25 years. We specialize in redoing residential landscapes, front yards and backyards. So I thought I would share with you my backyard landscape. I, you know, I've been tentative to do so because as much as I love my yard, um, it's never perfect. You know, it's, 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 you know, it's always, always evolving. So I thought, you know, I'd kind of wait until everything got into perfect position and, you know, it, everything would be in full bloom and do well. But you know, that's reality is that you just really should just enjoy and share all seasons of the landscape. And so I thought I'd share with you right now. We just finished with our rainy season. So there's a lot that's not currently in bloom, but really gives an idea of the different type of textures and big leaf and small leaf and, and contoured plantings that I tend to work with. So a lot of the material that I use is material that I've used in so many different landscapes along the Treasure and Space Coast. I really do try to stick with material that is hardy and tough and can handle our environment, our heavy rains, our cold snaps, our heat waves, our, you know, we, we're, <laughs> we're in such a, such a temperamental environment here. So I've got a backyard that kind of has um, three different microclimates. You know, I've got a space that's full sun and then I've got a space that really gets filtered light and then a space that's solid shade. So you really get to see what really works well in all different, all, all of those different three environments. So I hope this helps. I hope it gives you some inspiration. I'm going to list some plants and trees that I, I love to work with. So I, um, I hope you take away some of that material, some things that you can actually pick up at the, the nurseries or Home Depot or Lowe's or, or whatnot, where you can kind of create some of this on your own. But if you do need a little bit more help, absolutely. I'd be happy to help you. Again, I'm a landscape designer in Bureau Beach and we work from Bureau Beach all the way into the um, Space Coast area. So Melbourne, Vieira, Coco, um, down to Port St. Lucie and into Stewart. So please give me a call, I'd be happy to help you. So we'll get into the backyard space. I have a super, super narrow backyard. Um, I pretty much, I have about a 12 foot patio that comes right off the house and then approximately nine foot of grass. It gives us a little bit of room for cornhole when we need it. But after that, it's pretty much just plantings. And the plantings tend to encroach even more and more into that space, but um, I'm trying to, trying to keep them at a, at a bit of a barrier. So um, I, as just like I do with normal landscaping, I tend to work from the back in. So my perimeter buffers are always my tough buffers. They're always the ones that are strong and substantial. And then I'll work with some of the softer, bigger leaf plant material as I tear down. And that does a really good job of supporting each other. So um, I hope this helps. I'll list the names of the things that um, I really, really like to work with. I'll skip through some of them because, oh, gosh, y'all, it would take forever if I went through them all. But um, I will list my favorites. A couple divas I'll put in there because, um, you know, they're worth it. But I, I get it. You know, not everybody's up for a diva, especially their first time around in planting. But if there's um, a spot for it that you don't mind doing a little bit extra care, then I'll share a couple of those secrets with you. So y'all stick around and we'll kind of walk our way through the garden and I hope it helps. If there's anything that I haven't listed, then stick a, um, a comment down below and I'll and, and put the timestamp on there and I'll go back and look through it and I'll be happy to share those those um, plant names with you so anyway um, follow me all right guys so as promised I'm going to um, start with the perimeter of the back landscape here and I'm gonna try to hold this up super high, but I'm gonna use my trusty, you know, scissors back here. And it's by far my favorite tool in the garden. But um, I'll kind of point and show you kind of what we're um, what we're looking at, so that way you have a really good, clear idea and a good visual of um, the types of plants and trees and how they grow in a garden. So I'm gonna switch this around. So bear with me. 
All right then. So this is the edge of my garden. So I have got a 98 foot lot. It's wide, 98 foot lot wide. My perimeter buffer is about 16 foot wide. I know that sounds like a lot, but really I've stuffed a lot of material within this 16 foot width that's here. Um, and we'll start from just the edge. So this rear perimeter here, that kind of gives me a little bit of seclusion from the neighbor, that is called Rojo Red Copper Leaf. Also called Louisiana Red. So it just depends on um, where you pick it up from. But it grows about four foot per year super super fast grower nice and nice and thick when you really do like to shear it and trim it but it does so so good back there and it becomes a nice nice red backdrop to any kind of landscaping so you can pretty much put greens in front of it and it um it really is a nice showstopper and really grows nice and full to the back to really camouflage any kind of houses roof lines um you know anything that you just kind of don't don't want up front in your view line so that's the backdrop Then I've taken a um, traveler's palm as the centerpiece there this poor guy I mean we've had thunderstorms um, right now we're August 5th so we've had terrible terrible thunderstorms since June so every night seems to be a fun adventure for these poor palms but it's gotten pretty beat up over the time but it's doing super super well it's gonna flush back in no time it'll have solid leaves again I will get the name of this particular palm that's here. I apologize, I just don't recall it offhand. It was a gift and I have a secondary one. Don't mean to skip around on you guys, but I have a secondary one. And I just love this leaf curl, but this is from our dear friends, the Sextons. And I um, don't recall the name of this particular palm, but I will stick it up on the screen for you guys that way. You can find it. I know Palm City Palms carries it and Stewart. So if you're in that area, I would check that out. But it's such a such an awesome palm. Grows super super slow, and I love their leaf coverage. So to the back, again, my shears are going to be the outline here. But to the back here, that's Calusia. Let me see if I can get a better angle for you guys. But Calusias have a tendency to really grow pretty solid. So from the top to the bottom. They have a really nice, dense, thick canopy. And they really, you know, you, I, I leave mine natural. So the last time I, I trimmed these was about four or five months ago. And you kind of see they're not crazy wild, but they are thick and lush. And that's the way that I tend to, to like my, my backdrops, so. It's, it's per your preference on those. I've seen them really nice and tailored and square and they look gorgeous that way. I just tend to like a natural landscape. I'm, I'm only in my garden about four times a year for a heavy trim backs. So that's the way that I tend to garden. And it, that's mainly due to my schedule and my time, but it's your preference. If you really enjoy being out in the garden, you can really keep these things nice and nice and cleaned and, and trimmed. But I have a, I have a um, enjoyment for them to be layered and thick and lean on one another. So to the back, I have marguerite copper leaves. And depending on the amount of sun exposure they get, if they're in the shade, they have a little bit more of a pink tone to them. And that's those right there. Um, if they're in the sun, they have, or excuse me, and they're in the shade, they have more of that pale coloring. If they're in the sun, they have more of a pink tone to them. So these are kind of in between in their current environment. I think it's because the palm trees are giving them a little bit of cover. Of course, we've got King Sagos here. Now, King Sagos can be a bit of a diva. Um, they have a tendency to get that scale that um, Dominion kind of pretty much cures on those. So I use Dominion about two times a year during the rainy season, and it keeps my King Sagos super, super healthy. So I, I, I think they're worth a little bit of effort. 
to the back. Now this is not a fair representation of those plants in the back. Those are blaze copper leaf and I'll, I'll I, I can post a picture of what they actually look like. Um, those have been cut back. They got so nice and so big so quick that I had to really cut them back before the video. But I will, um, again, post a picture so you really have a better idea of what that leaf coverage looks like. As we work our way down, this is a copper leaf. This is called ruffle copper leaf. Some people call it sunset hue. Um, it has a nice ruffled flower. It has a variegation to it. I love the slow growth of this guy. Now this has been about six months without trimmings. So you can really see the overall height of what those do. I mean, they do cluster nice and tight, but they will get some nice, you know, five or six foot tall. So if you, you want a smaller planting, kind of like you see, like I have over here. Now these I've kept at a tighter range. So these are more compact. These are, these have, are gonna be smaller and I'm getting ready to do a heavy cut back on these. So that I will cu actually cut these sunset hues down in half and then they'll flush out and become a nice little rounded plant again. Now I will mix a bit of annuals amongst this. So we've got some bush daisies to the back that are currently not in bloom. And we've got some salvia right there is that little cluster of purple. Um, and they do a nice job of just kind of giving us a pop of color through the season. I do have some ruby reds right here and they're one of my favorites to use. Anytime I have yellow or bright orange or any coloring that I'm trying to really show off that color, I'll stick in some ruby reds to offer that deep contrast of color and they do a really good job. They're super, super tough. And the only, um, only issue I found with them is the bunnies tend to really like them. So during bunny season, I would probably wait a little bit of time before, um, before planting those. But other than that, they're tough, they're hardy, they don't, they're not susceptible to pests. So they're a really, really good plant to work with. And if you're gonna bring in some bright colors, they're a nice choice for that too, because they show off that bright color. Right here, I have a nice clustering of alocasia. These are the dwarf alocasia. Let me back up a bit. So these are the dwarf alocasia and they will grow to five foot tall, but they start usually around the two foot range. So they're perfect to tuck in a space that you just want max fill. They're the filler plants. So if you want something tall and vertical above those, these do a fantastic job of giving you that girth, that impact, that big leaf. So you can mix small leaves with these or big vertical blooms with these and they do a fantastic job. Coming around these, um, this is a different variety of copper leaf. This here is um, Java Whites. And Java Whites have a tendency to be a little bit taller, a little bit bigger. They sprawl a little bit more. over on the other side, but um, they have a nice, nice variegation to the leaves. So you always have color and I can put them in the dark and I could put them in the full sun. So they love either or in the shade, they give you that bright spot of color. In the sun, they do a really good job of kind of giving a darker coloration nice job of giving us some variation of color, lights and darks. The centerpiece there is the Queen Emma. This poor guy has been beaten to death by two different hurricanes. Thank you, Vero Beach. Um, but they tend to find this guy. We've um, we've had some pretty pretty big damage of, of limbs falling dead center on that particular plant. But you gotta love Florida because it's popped back and doing well and, and back happy and it bloomed last month for the first time. So I think I think it's we're we're in the wind there. Um, Right to the side there, you're gonna see those are quarter lines and it's a variety of quarter lines that I'm using. That's the red plants with the variegated leaf up there. Um, we've got red tie, bolero. Um, so there's, there's red tie. There's bolero with a little bit of the darker leaf there. Um, and then this variety here is princess.
they do such a good job of giving you that variation in color. Now they do need protection from the sun, so I would totally stick with um, a little bit of canopy coverage. You kind of see overall, they've got this coconut tree as coverage and they've got this areca palm as coverage and they do a really, really good job. If you had a chance to watch my video about three years ago, you'll know that um, this section right here was pretty much um, all shade. Uh, we had an oak tree that was taken down during one of the terrible thunderstorms that struck by lightning and it was currently sitting right here. You might even be able to see the stump down there. But, you know, we were super sad. We love that oak. So we've made lemonade out of the lemons that we were dealt here because um, we created a great outdoor seating section. It brought us a little bit closer to the garden, as you can see, and it gave us a um, pretty much a different platform to work with. We now have a quarter of our yard, which is pretty much a full sun planting option, which pretty much changed, if you saw the first video, changed this whole section to a nice, open, tropical, full sun planting climate. And that's, um, that gave us a lot of variation in color. So, you know, we were sad to lose the tree, but at the same time, it was great to be able to incorporate some additional plants into the garden. So, okay, so we are gonna move on. So again, starting from the back, we have the Kateria palms, cat palms, all the way through the back there. Now those are on a slight incline. So um, I believe they're about four foot from elevation. So they're tucked up nice and tall. Um, they do max out at nine to 10 foot tall, which makes them perfect for the location that we want. If you can kind of see, we're tipping out a screen room to the back there. So as those really grow into full size, we will feel like we are in our own tropical paradise. No houses here or here or here or here. Um, and it'll give us that privacy that we're looking for, or the privacy feel that we would like to have in our backyard. So the cat palms will come all along through here and they continue on through the rest, the rest of the garden there. So you'll, we'll have a nice nine to 10 foot barrier. To the front of those cat palms, we have a variation. Of course, we have the quarter lines that are here and then we go into Congos and then we go into elephant ear and these are the dwarf elephant ear not the giants so again we're in that four foot range but i love what they do to a backspace i love those big leaves they do have a tendency to get tall and lanky so you will see the stalks on those hence why i have those monsteras just below because the monsteras do the opposite thing the monsteras grow up and out so they're gonna go up and they're gonna lean towards the water feature while the alocasias do the opposite where they go straight up and then um, give you that big leaf expansion. So the Monsteras are really starting to do their job, which we so appreciate as they fold over the waterfall, kind of giving that a natural look there. So if, um, if you have a little bit of a shade environment, they don't need full shade, but they do need partial. So they need a little bit of protection and then they give you that really, really great split leaf look. And I'm not sure what else offers that tropical look like Monsteras do. So right here, this is called Leopard's Ear. And I will tell you guys, this is, this is a plant I've only worked with about a year and a half. So I'm still really getting to know it, but I, love that big giant ear on there. Let me, let me zoom in a little bit. Yeah. So this, this plant, I, you know, I just, I love the way it hangs. I love the way it folds over. It's super, super, super cool. And I think even amongst all of these other big leaf plants, which I would normally wouldn't put together because they don't kind of show off enough when they're all grouped versus mixed with other different contrasting leaves but these do a nice job of really kind of sealing that corner. So I, I think I'm gonna use them more and more, but yeah, they do need shade. They will burn in the full sun. So definitely filtered light. So morning sun, I would say until about, until about one o'clock, perfect. But anything after that, they're not your guy. So 
And the same with these Congos that are over here. Big leaf plants. Love, 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 love the shade. So I've clustered them together. And as you can see, they're under the canopy of this triangle fan palm, this areca palm, this coconut palm. It gives them the protection that they need. So they're perfect for that environment. So that's, that's where you want to place them. They really do a nice job of showing off together, don't you think? It's just, I mean, come on, you guys. So to the back, we have a, a sloppy painter. And I'm hoping he gets about six to eight foot tall because I think they're super, super cool when they get some nice size to them. They just kind of give you that amongst the, the dark green, the dark green and red that's here and the dark green that's here. They really give you that nice shot of yellow as they grow in. So they're perfect as, as a, a partial shade plant to give you that highlight color. So always look when you're putting a bunch of greens or a bunch of dark coloring in there, give yourself that contrast and it'll, it'll really pay off. This is a disappearing feature that's here. So this waterfall cascades into a dual. So this is a spill that's here and a spill that's here and then it goes into the ground that's here. I love the sound of water. I don't think that there's anything that brings you back more than the sound of water. You can have great color and great tropical landscape and great scent. However, waterfalls do the job of really pulling you outside. Now, I will tell you, you can have a beautiful tropical backyard and you'll have very little maintenance. However, waterfalls, once a month, you're in there doing some, doing some work on those. So as much as I love them, they do require participation. So here we have got, well, let me start at the back. So here we have a giant triangle fan palm that's about 15 years old. He was part of our original landscape. And then to the front, we have a triple spindle palm that was a gift from Susan at Palm City Palms. We first got him, he was pretty small. So um, right now he's starting to fill in and kind of giving us that under canopy feel that I was really hoping that he would. That's what's great about palm trees, you guys. You know, everybody says, you know, palm trees are only good for so long because they offer you coverage and then they shoot straight up and they don't offer you that coverage anymore. But that's the time that you get the opportunity to really come in and bring in that second tier. This second tier is gonna offer your eye that immediate rest, that immediate look right to this space. And then you're gonna go up into this awesome canopy. And so don't, don't lose that opportunity, you know, it's a layering effect in your backyard. And what's great about palm trees is that you don't need a lot of space to layer. You can have a palm tree that starts out at 12 foot and then becomes 25 foot. Well, wow, now you've got that secondary tier that you can really work in that's eight foot or nine foot and you have a whole new garden again. So it's, um, it's, it's just really fun to, to really create those layers in a, in a backyard space. If you ever get a chance to tour a tropical garden, you'll see that they, they do the same type of thing. They come in and just add to it and really just just give it that that next layer that it needs. Okay. So here we have the dwarf screw pines. the feel of grasses without the work of grasses. Right down below, we have the waterfall agaves. I love them. They're not showstoppers when they're little, but they are pretty, pretty cool as they really grow up and fold over the, the rock and, and give you that impact, that, that big leafed impact. And what I love, they're one of the agaves that don't have any thorns, so they're definitely worth working with.
I've got some, you know, bromeliads tucked in and out through the, the water feature. And I tend to always do that with water features. So again, I've used the alocasias as fillers here. You know, a little better look at that triple spindle palm that's there. We've got some annuals grouped here. And then now, looking at the rest of the buffer, we've got the elephant, dwarf ele elephant alocasias here, the sanchezia that's here the um, red tie plants that are mixed in through here. And we've got some exotica uh, ties in there. And these are all a quarter line variety. And if you saw my first video, I had those throughout the whole garden. Unfortunately, because half of the garden became sun, we really did pull a lot of that material into this shade environment over here. So we were able to re reestablish and, and utilize them throughout the rest of the garden, which is a huge bonus. But um, yeah, so you'll see them mixed in through here. The Sanchezia is something that is new. I, I started about two years ago. I'm a big fan. I just, I love what it does to the space. Now, this is what it looks like in dead summer with crazy rain and you can kind of see this leaf texture that's on here. But when it becomes winter, that becomes a little bit darker or when you get more shade, that becomes the leaf green becomes a little bit darker. And that green tends to have almost like a, a charcoal gray type of look to it. And then you still see that yellow, but it has a tendency to give you almost a white tint to it so it, it kind of really gives the plant a whole new look and more of a shade environment so don't be afraid to use these guys in pretty much a heavy shade environment so they'll handle full sun they'll handle partial light and they'll handle heavy shade which to me is a winter winter chicken dinner in just about any type of landscape so again we have the triangle fan palms which i love those guys are pretty awesome and um, these guys have been, they're about 15 years old. They were starting in the garden. Um, I, they were one of the first things that we put in the garden, which um, makes them about, about 12 years old in the landscape. So that's, um, and they were pretty good size when I put them in. This right here is a Diune palm, so a cycad palm. Um, that cycad palm has also known as a dinosaur palm. This apparently was around during the dinosaur times and has lasted, um, <laughs> longer than we have. So it's a overall tough palm. It has a feathery kind of fern look to it. It does have a little bit of sharpness to the fronds, but I, you know, I love the way it moves. A little bit of breeze, which God help us, we do not have right now. Um, it, it, it moves in the garden. So anytime, if you've got a backyard that's on the lake, I will stick four or five of these guys in there because that this, this movement of the fronds is just gorgeous in the in the backyard so so you lucky people enjoy the movement i will not so we're going to the um i've got another sloppy painter there and he is really starting to grow with some height there uh, i'd like to let him get about eight foot tall again he is the point for that plant in the garden is to really give us that pop of brightness that's that flashlight in the garden and then we've got some, you know, filtered quarter lines. You kind of see what quarter lines do. That variation in color to me really speaks, that really gives us that tropical feel overall. Love the variation. We've got the bolero. We've got the, we've got the um, red sisters, Hawaiian ties, the um, Anne Marie's. We've got we've got just pretty much of, of a nice variety. The diamonds back there, the exoticas that gives us a little bit of white in there, which is this guy here. I mean, how pretty is that? So we have a Queen Emma here, and she has pretty much lived through 
the oak tree falling on her, um, several, several thunderstorms as well as two hurricanes and she's doing fantastic. So we've relocated her to the back to really give her a chance to kind of have some protection back there. And she's doing super, super well. And I see her blooms from when I'm sitting um, in the, on the patio up, up top here. And it's, it's gorgeous. I just, I love her her blooms throughout all summer. So she's very thankful and shows me her appreciation by blooming pretty much all summer long. So we've got some exotica quarter lines here and here. Again, we're back with a leopard's ear. You know, I, I love what these do as a skirt plant. They have a tendency to really give that lower coverage because if you could see the Congo has grown, you know, this Congo is about eight or nine years old and he's starting to, to grow taller. So some of that will be leggy at the bottom, which these two plants really have a, 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 do a really good job of creating a skirt for that. So make sure that when you have a plant that you know is going to get some size to it, you know, give it a little bit of a buffer with the skirt planting down below. That's really going to give you that fill. So I have a gardenia through here and I will, even in my designs, I will make sure to stick a gardenia or a jasmine or anything that has a, good, a bit of fragrance um, amongst the seating section. So this gardenia is adjacent to the pool area. I have a gardenia there that's adjacent to the fireplace and a gardenia over there that's again across from the um, seating section that looks over the waterfall. Fragrance is enough to just captivate you as you're sitting out here and your guests. So make sure you stick anything fragrant if possible. Now we'll, you know, draw a bee or two. So I would, you know, keep that in consideration if you're allergic. But overall, I think they're really, really worth having them. As soon as you walk out your back door, you get that great, great smell. So this is a very old European fan palm. This guy's about 25 years old. He came from a project that I was on and um, the client did not want him anymore. And so I fell in love with just the age of that canopy, that old man trunk that's on there. So I asked if it was okay to repurpose him. So we did a pest control treatment and put him right in my garden and he has been here ever since. So that was about 10 years ago and he's super happy. Um, down below, we have a variety of plantings here. So we've got Odorata bromeliad, which is that silver bromeliad. It um, has no thorns to it. So it does a really good job of kind of giving you that fountain type of look. Uh, we have a green Congo that's right there. Of course, the gardenia that's to the back. We've got the Java White Copper Leaf, which is the bigger variety of the copper leaf right there. And a philodendron that's down here. Most people know them as money plants, but they do a really good job as being a thick little barrier. So I'll usually cluster them together. We have a Congo Croton in the center and a little bit of bromeliad coverage down below. And I'll stick a few little annuals down the mix and that varies. That could be, you know, it could be a variety of things, but most of the time I use the white begonias because they do such a nice job of coverage. I had the white begonias underneath the Dayun palm there and just cut them back, but gosh, they were gorgeous. They filled into that Dayun and all the way around it. And it was just a nice bright spot of white. So if you have a little bit of shade, those white begonias, odoratas, they're awesome. cat palm here. I have a red lobster call, claw um, heliconia that's there. I originally had it to the far left of the garden when it was shade, but it really needed some support. And so if you're going to, if you have a fence or a corner area and you want some heliconia, the lobster claw heliconia is perfect for that spot, but it does need some support. And I have a triple Christmas palm here that's fully matured that really offered that that support all the way around that heliconia. So I think it did a nice job of that. And then I've got some quarter lines on the corner here. And uh, finally, these are transplanted from a sun environment. So they're just now starting to bloom, but this right here is my ginger. It's the red ginger. And um, this is the first year it's bloomed and it's 
it's been almost a full solid year that I took it from the waterfall area to this section here because originally the waterfall area was full shade and that changed after we took down the oak tree. So we have a quarter line cluster here and these are called Floricas. A little bit of the Sanchezia mixed in there and some of the dwarf and regular sized Congos. And I mean the Congos, let me show you a picture or a close up of those, but that red stem I just think is fantastic. All the new growth on these guys are dark leaf. I mean, this leaf is almost matured, so you don't actually get to see how dark that red leaf is. But when you're standing and observing these Congos, you really get that variation in color when you're when you're seeing them in reality. I wish they showed that in the photo, but they don't, or in the video, but they don't. So I have got some large coconuts along the edge of my deck and more of the red gingers. And these red gingers, I've got one coming into bloom, super excited about. So you can kind of see it starting here. Now these red gingers, I've had trouble finding them um, recently, but they are worth it. So if you do run across a red ginger or a pink ginger in, in your nursery, pick them up because they do take a little bit of time for establishment, but I will post a picture of what they look like in full bloom. And when they're in full bloom and they're really, they're really, really happy with the location that they're in, they're absolutely gorgeous. And I mean, they're gorgeous all year long. They might have one month in the winter time in our area where they're not super happy, but other than that, they're just beautiful. So they do really give you a lot. So I would, I would grab those if you can. I've had a little bit of trouble finding them. is a Madagascar tree. And um, I'll show you if I better a little better picture of that. But so this one is a triple trunked. They will continue to multiply those trunks will if you allow them. So um, when I purchased this guy, I had found him in a nursery that was going out of business. And so I asked them if I could take it out of their front display and they allowed me to do so, which was a super, super sweet day for me. And um, then it, I transplanted it. And because of these thorns, you know, you had to be super, super careful with it. Nobody was happy with, with me when I decided to put it in my garden. But a year later, they fleshed out with these cool palm tree canopy heads and they produce white flowers that are so, super, super fragrant. And I love it. I have them near my seating section and they do such a good job of giving you that impact of color and they're you know they're a little bit a little dangerous with those thorns but who doesn't like a plant with a bit attitude you guys i mean come on this tree is cool and she knows it a gardenia these are blue my minds and i'm doing this video in the evening because it's ridiculously hot during the day but uh, right now they're not in bloom, unfortunately. They are asleep. They do curl their leaves when they're asleep, but when they are in full bloom, you'll get that beautiful blue flower that um, they give you, and they give you that about 10 months out of the year, and it's just a perfect carpet flower, and they're they're gorgeous. So I'll use them in any kind of entrance way or any kind of entrance of a bed or to highlight a curve of a bed. They do a fantastic job of that. Now, uh, a lot of people have a hard time figuring out how to trim these guys. These are just a perfect little hedge. So they grow two foot tall. And all you have to do is take a hedge trimmer and go right across the top and right across the edge of those. And they will love you for it. So literally the next day, they will pop out with new blooms and stand up and give you this. Let me, let me show you the, how they stand up. But, so they'll stand up and give you this kind of bloom that pops out amongst the, the, the level grouping of them. And 
they're worth they're worth having so some people confuse them with the blue days they are not a blue days they are a hybrid variety that actually is better than the original um purslane and I'll use those in my rock garden all the time. I, you know, I know you get a, maybe a two year time frame out of purslane and they're not bloom. I mean, they're in bloom, but they're curled up right now because of the time of the day. But when they're open, they're gorgeous, gorgeous blooms. And I have one there in my waterfall too. So, but they're, they're worth having. I put them in pots. I put them in rock gardens. Um, these right here are imperialis. Vermilions. Let me step up so I can show you what those look like. So here they are here, and I've got a couple more um, over my walkway, but I love these guys. They're vermiliads that do not have the thorns. They do not have any kind of teeth whatsoever. their on their leaves um, they're just overall tough plants they can handle full shade to partial light so they don't want direct direct sun but look where we are you guys I mean as the Sun comes over my house these guys get pretty direct impact and you'll, you'll notice a little bit of lightning on their their leaves on the edges here but overall I think they do a really nice job now I will show you what they look like and shade, a little sneak peek on my side here. Here we are. So, these are on my side and I have a wall waterfall that's not on right now. But these guys um, do a nice job of being, they're dark and have a contrast of a little bit of purple down below. So, they do a nice job there. Okay, let's get back to the back buffer. This really should keep me on track. So I have got, um, again, the waterfall agave tucked into the corner there, some, some foxtail fern. And again, I usually tend to put those around statues because they just give you that little bit of texture difference. I mean, look, when you have a shiny leaf against a fuzzy leaf, it's, it's, Pretty, pretty magical what it does, especially if you do it in clusters. So right there, I only have two, but imagine if there were 10, you know, you would have a nice cluster of 10 against a nice shiny leaf of, of purple, for instance, and a nice shiny leaf of yellow. And they do a beautiful job of giving you that contrast. So they're so, so, so worth it. Thank you guys for taking the tour with me. I, I hope this gave you some inspiration and gave you some ideas of plants and trees that do super, super well in a garden. Um, these are overall tough plants. Um, if there's anything that you saw in the garden that I didn't get a chance to list, um, stick that in the comments below and, and stick the little timetable down as well. And then I'll be happy to, to kind of recap and go over that with you. So. Um, if you need more inspiration or you need even more than inspiration and you need a little bit of landscape help, please give us a call. We'd be happy to work with you. My husband and I, like I said, own construction landscape companies. So we um, specialize in front yard and backyard renovations. So if you need just a renovation and rip out and removal and, and start fresh and kind of bring in a whole new style to your landscape, then, then give us a call because we'd be happy to help you. If you need a little bit more detail on plants and trees, maybe some of the things that I listed here uh, on our website, www.constructionlandscapeinc.com. Go to the Get Inspired page, and that will give you actually a picture of each plant and tree, not that was here, but overall plants and trees that I've used throughout the years. And it gives you a little idea of, you know, loves shade, hates shade, loves this or loves that, and then the, just the general outcome of the plant, you know, how tall it grows, and you know, what type of environment that it likes to be in. So that'll give you a little bit of input and, and, and kind of a, a little bit of a guideline. And, uh, you know, all of us gardeners need that. And you can thank me by, you know, putting in the nice comment down below that, um, that it was helpful to you. So 
if you need some landscape help and you're looking to renovate your front or backyard landscape and this is kind of a style that you like or you look on our website and you see some other pictures of maybe more clean line landscapes that you tend to like to work with then please give us a call because we'd be happy to help you uh, we design or i design and my husband and our crew does the installation so we are an all-in-one turnkey team so we'd be happy to help you thanks uh, if you need to reach us You'll, I'll put the link of the website, phone number, all the fun stuff and the info down below and give us a call. Thanks. Y'all have a nice evening.